So there is green around the world. We are organic farming in a huge dimension, and now we have green IT as well. Again, is that something like a hype, a fashion, or why all this green discussion quite now? If you want to see this, you must be aware of the world and where we are living quite now. In my previous incarnation in UNEP, we developed a nice uh, method, quite known now, that you can shape the world with different indicators. So first, to show you what is going on in the world, if you ask what is the shape of the world, if you use as indicator the population under 15 years of age, and you see that's the world then, you can easily see that Africa is a very big continent in this very moment, that India is increasing dramatically, that we have a slimming process in the Americas, from time to time, the one or the other in the Americas should be happy to slim, but that is another case here. You see that there are lots of changes, especially with regard to Europe as well. I don't want to go in all detail. But you see, we have a differentiation in the population development, and this population development will be an urban development, so we will be confronted with an urban millennium can kind of expect that in Asia the cities will grow annually with 6.5%. The city I was living in, in Nairobi in Africa, grow with 5%, meaning that they are doubling their population in less than 15 years. So we have this challenge, and we have to ask what are the consequences with regard to economic development. If you take GDP as an indicator for the world, you have this picture. And you can see that we have quite a difference. Uh, Africa is nearly disappearing. Uh, we have three big balloons, and they are always linked with those regions of very low economic wealth, of economic development. Needless to say, this is quite an unstable world. Wherever we have the border between the balloons and the rest of the world, we have a lot of risk with regard to migration. And we all know that uh, there is a development of new, uh, let me say, vaults or uh, security reasons in this ring as well. So what we need is, of course, huge economic development exactly in this region. Having economic development necessary in this needs, first and foremost, resources, and energy. So the perspective in front of us, ladies and gentlemen, is a perspective where we need urgently economic development in the developing countries to avoid that the imbalance is producing migration and is producing conflicts and up to challenges on a peaceful world. And when we do this, we have to be aware that energy will be a bottleneck and resources will be a bottleneck. Not capital. Not capital. Not human capital either. But the resources, the resources in energy and the resources in the material we are using. Therefore, the challenge for the future is and remains, and it will even increase, that you go to production of highest energy efficiency and highest resource efficiency. That is not ideology. That is not a green idea of some people who have nothing else to do. It's not the specific interest of Greenpeace. It's your interest. If you want to have economic development linked to overcome those burdens, then you have to go in direction where you are the world leader in energy savings and in resource savings. And that brings everybody quite now in the question, what is going on with green IT? I don't like green IT so very much because it is always giving the signal as this is only a topic with regard to the environment. It is much more. It's economically necessary. I will never start to speak about this and starting with climate change. If you go to the developing countries and start with climate change, they come back and say, that's your problem. We need economic development. We have to overcome poverty. 
being for more than eight years in Nairobi in Kenya, you can imagine that I would never, ever forget this. I have to prove that the environment has a value added as an instrument to overcome poverty. And therefore, what we need is a technology development, a technology revolution, which gives a clear signal that economic development is possible and not limited with the existing resources. In this case, you always have two options. On the one side, you have the option to develop new solutions, for example, new energy supply possibilities, renewable energies, others are discussing intensively from nuclear. So you have to do your utmost not to stick only on fossil fuels, because fossil fuels, I don't discuss whether and when they are limited, but they are now responsible for 80% of the energy supply, and if you stick only to those energy, and you have the increase of growth in China, in India, in Brazil, in South Africa, and we must be interested on this, then you will very soon come to a huge increase of of the energy side, and you cannot go in the same direction. So it's not the question whether we come to an end of fossil fuels, but whether the increase of supply can match the increase in demand. When I studied economics at the university, as mentioned a long time ago, it was something like a law that there is an elasticity of one between energy demand and economic growth. One percent economic growth is at least one percent energy demand increase. In China, this elasticity is above one. So you must be aware if you have 10 percent GDP growth there, the energy demand is increasing at least at 10 percent. And if you go then on the supply side, you have the results, of course, on the two main targets of energy policy, competitiveness, the prices are increasing, and security of uh, supply. We have a lot of problems in this field as well, being a country here in the center of Europe, only to mention it from Germany. So that's one solution. I don't want to go in this direction. That's not your. And the other is the efficiency part. The efficiency part is, I believe, the main key to overcome these bottlenecks. And it's fascinating, by the way, if you are an old hand in this field, to learn just from Matt a moment before what are the perspectives of energy saving in the computer industry, in the IT industry. I want to mention the same, but uh, you did it. I don't want to repeat it once more. Yes, this is the very answer to what I believe is a huge advantage of a market economy. In a market economy, ladies and gentlemen, technical progress is never coming like manna from heaven, but it's always concentrated to the bottlenecks to overcome. When you have a bottleneck, you will see that people are sit down and ask, how can we do it better? How can we avoid that his dissipation has a lot of negative consequences for your bill? How can we avoid other energy waste in our sector? That I believe, and does not believe, it's clear that governments will act as well. So you must expect that there will be legislative action in the European Union, at least. There will be the one or the other frontrunner. I sincerely hope that this can be also done by this country here, by this government. And that's not a burden. Those who are starting first in this field will be the winner in the market, 100%. If you look a little bit to the car market around the world, those who started less to ask for the efficiency of their cars, they are losing the market, not the others, quite in the contrary.